in Nigeria, we have two major seasons, a dry season and rainy season. And it would seem that every season has its peculiar challenge. This morning, um, on one of the dailies, we're talking about a flood outlook, um, even for the FCT. It sometimes it's a little disturbing that we do have situations of flooding within the FCT. They might not last very long, maybe they're flash floods, but they happen nonetheless, and sometimes uh, they take lives. Are you concerned about any health challenge that we could have in this period um, as a DG of the NCDC? Well, yes, we, um, our floods in general are a challenge to health. Uh, they cause disruption, they cause displacement, um, they cause, uh, again, uh, disruptions to utilities and, uh, uh, again, in other places, may lead to contamination of uh, freshwater sources. So specifically for the rainy season and what we do at the NCDC, we are worried about cholera because what happens with the flooding, however brief, especially in places where there is indiscriminate defecation and poor waste disposal, is that all of those contaminants are um, taken into um, the sources of water mm. and they contaminate them. And then what we get are cholera outbreaks. Uh, but it's important that I highlight that even ahead of the rainy season, we are already seeing cholera. Cholera, I think there have been roughly uh, approximately about 1,900 uh, cases reported so far um, for more than 1,900? Yes, that's uh, 1,900 sus Suspected already. cases, yes, yeah. reported so far um, this year already from uh, about 23 states. So cholera now appears to be um, in two phases. There's always something in the background as long in areas that are typically underserved, hard to reach or have um, problems with utilities. And then there's the exacerbation that happens um, during the rainy season, especially in the drier parts of the country. And this is of grave concern because we know that last year, um, and even when we were very worried about COVID, cholera was a bigger killer than even COVID itself. Um, so there are questions as to whether we have paid sufficient attention uh, to this particular illness or has our preparations or our panic and anxiety around, um, or let's say measures we're taking against COVID, has, has this... Um, um, will I say the outbreak of cholera benefited from any of the preparations or any of the uh, measures we've put in place against COVID? Um, from the perspective of the NCDC, yes. Uh, surveillance is better. Our ability to respond may be better. Uh, from the perspective of the uh, persons likely to be affected by cholera, no. I mean, COVID and cholera are two different things. Last year, Nigeria had the own enviable uh, uh, rank of, of being, reporting the most n number of cholera cases in the country. This is a waterborne disease. The solution has been known forever. Um, water, sanitation and hygiene. Um, until those are put into place, uh, whatever we do as a health security agency in preparing to respond to cases is really just that respond to cases. So cholera ideally should be, if you have it at all, is something you uh, would expect in situations of acute situations of flooding, maybe um, in places where there are camps and crowded people, but not sort of in villages and in towns where you're supposed to have amenities and things are relatively stable, but we are having them there. Um, and that is the challenge. So I do not believe that we have um, had um, as much of the investments that we should have had in water, sanitation and hygiene in all the affected areas. But I hope to be proved wrong because we, the numbers we tell, as I said once at uh, uh, the National Economic Council meeting, it was easy to um, change what happens in the cholera narrative. If um, uh, 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 their excellencies, the respective governors and all of the other uh, local government and other leaders and partners in states make or made the investment in um, water and sanitation now or continue to do so, we will see an immediate impact on what happens to cholera in those locations. But in the meantime, surveillance is strengthened. We have countermeasures. We have reviewed um, all of the responses we had to cholera last year with a view of finding the weak spots and um, uh, planning to respond to those. We have had refresher trainings on sort of vaccination in the acute situation of an outbreak. But again, these are all measures to respond to an outbreak that is actually largely preventable.
Yeah. Let me flip this to Lagos now. I'm, I'm sure my colleagues have questions for you. Yes, in, indeed, Malpe. I'd like us to now go to um, monkeypox and even the um, outward symptom of that um, rare disease is scary. DG Aditifa, how much of a public concern is um, this uh, outbreak? Uh, the first thing to say, Margaret, um, uh, I mean, Buki, sorry, um, is that there is no outbreak of monkeypox. I think the term outbreak is being used wrongly. Yes, we are having cases of monkeypox, just like we continue, to, we have had, uh, continue to have out, uh, monkeypox cases since it re-emerged in 2017. Um, just to give an updated summary, so since 2017 to date, we have had about 558 um, monkeypox cases with about eight deaths. Um, this year alone, we've had 46 suspected cases reported and about eight um, cases confirmed with no deaths. We know um, that there are even since the uh, uh, Last time we looked at the data, there are a few suspected cases here and there that have been reported, and we are waiting for updated results from testing from um, our National Reference Lab. Uh, so the occurrence of sporadic cases of monkeypox um, is not surprising um, and does not constitute an outbreak. But yes, we are worried about monkeypox because, um, as you know, it's closest relation is the smallpox virus. We are worried that it potentially um, can change from something being sporadic or something that is not very good at person-to-person -person transmission to something that can give us a cause of concern, which is why we continue to keep an eye um, on it. And um, Back to you. Thank you for that correction. Okay. And uh, in relation to that, Correct me if I'm wrong, monkeypox is a viral infection transmitted from animal to humans. Now, is this a time when yes. those um, um, adventurous meat consumers should begin to shy away from stopping on the expressway to patronize those uh, bush meat sellers? And specifically, which of those animals, you know, should those adventurers begin to shun in the interim? I think it's important that we shun... Um, or be careful, um, prefer to shun, but be careful in handling all bushmeats. Uh, the greatest risk to um, our health security and uh, health in general, um, as we know, are going to be zoonotic illnesses. And these zoonotic illnesses are like SARS-CoV-2, like monkeypox. These are uh, pathogens that primarily affect animals but acquire um, capability or transmission capacity to humans and then what happens thereafter is once if they change when they infect the first few humans and become more effective in person-to-person -person transmission then we have a problem so in general we should be careful um, in handling bush meat uh, and the like even rats and all of that because again it's part of the problems we have with Lassa fever we are not managing our interactions with with rats um, we're not storing our food um, and other things properly to avoid contamination by these animals. So, I mean, in the case of Lassa fever, of course, the rats come into our house or wherever we interact. In the case of monkeypox, um, people interact with bush meat and with other animals. Um, and your question about animals is, well, we know about monkeys. We know some other um, um, sort of bush meat uh, are involved as well. Uh, and I think all of them should be handled with care. Well, if you can, can uh, give us a peek into your dashboard, uh, as it were. I know a lot of people know the NCDC because of COVID, which is, I mean, good now. People uh, have increased awareness about health-seeking behavior and all of that. But if you could help us understand your view uh, uh, from the NCDC, there are various diseases. I'm glad we're talking monkeypox, cholera, and the, and the rest. Which is the most concerning uh, for you as uh, an agency, which of these diseases is, is a big deal that you're saying, well, this is of concern, we need to pay attention to it at this time? That's a very difficult question to, to ask, answer. Um, all of the diseases within our purview are of importance to us, especially those that threaten lives and, uh, and beyond lives, those that threaten livelihoods. So, um, as 
unlikely as it seems, we are still worried about COVID. Okay, COVID, yes, everything appears to be fine now in terms of cases, uh, case numbers and deaths. Uh, but the thing is, this virus is operating in the background and we continue to be worried about the emergence of um, a virus that suddenly can escape our protective immune responses like Omicron did and cause us a new round uh, of problems, which is why we continue to keep an eye on things and continue to advocate for vaccination, even while people are sort of working really hard and deservedly so to return to their normal lives. We are worried about Lassa fever. Lassa fever, um, the, the season, for want of a better description, opened in November, and we continue to have cases at this point in time. Um, in 2022, we've had more cases um, than we had in the past year. Some of that, of course, is because of um, increased uh, number of laboratories diagnosing, increased uh, um, awareness and, uh, and all of that. Uh, but the, the point is that we have had more cases at this time this year compared to the previous year. But the um, sort of, if you want to say, glimmer of hope is that we've not had as many deaths at uh, this time, like we did uh, last year, when we look at uh, uh, fatality. Uh, we're worried about monkeypox. Monkeypox, although it, it doesn't, it's a sporadic condition that, in the worst case scenario, um, may cause death in one out of every 10 patients, depending on other risk factors that they may have. But um, this is a disease that we do not yet fully understand. There are no vaccines present uh, available at this time and very few or indeed actually no um, established treatment. So if anything changes about this particular condition, um, we might have a, a, a cause for concern. And of course, as we said earlier, we are worried about cholera. Cholera um, was a close runner. Uh, pushed COVID all the way um, in the past year in terms of, sadly, the number of Nigerian citizens um, um, that died from cholera. So the season is um, coming up soon because the rains are here. Um, and this and all that things that we can see or cannot see continue to be a, cost or a source of worry for us uh, in terms of our role in assuring Nigeria's health security. So it, it can't be one of sort of one things. We, we, we are looking at all of them. Of course, we prioritize um, our activities according to what needs responding to at a certain time, but we never, even while the agency was COVIDized, we never lost sight of all the other problems that we have to contend with. Okay, let me just quickly, as we wrap up now, let me ask you whether you think that you're going to get hurt. I mean, if your concerns should heighten, uh, do you think you're going to get hurt <laughs> even as the noise of politics, you know, overtakes the air? Well, yes, um, the important question. Uh, the, we hope to get hurt um, before we are forced to hear. So obviously, if you had a mass mobility, mass mortality event, uh, everybody would have to pay attention. Uh, but we hope that nothing like that happens and um, we can get some attention or prioritization of um, ongoing concerns and challenge, even in this uh, necessary political season. Is that happening already? Is what happening? Already? Is that happening? That, that attention, is it being paid? Because, I mean, you've just spoken about a few illnesses that are of concern to you. I think my colleague asked you to prioritize. Yeah. And you will see that almost all of them, are, you know, are still of concern to you. Do you think you're getting the attention that you currently need to get to ensure that the message is being passed home to everyone? We are getting some attention, obviously, like everything else in life, there's always room for improvement. We would like to, to see more. Um, uh, we have, you know, we don't have any challenges with collaboration with our state partners who are in the front lines looking after um, these concerns. Uh, we know that, and it's not different now in the political season compared to before, um, we've had challenges of resources locally for, um, you know, responding to things and, and the need to sort of uh, many times conduct ad hoc resource uh, mobilization and all of that. But um, in general, uh, we've not had a worsening in terms of attention 
um, in the front lines. Uh, uh, and uh, the political season does not necessarily change or affect previous government commitments to, say, the NCDC, for example, or the funding that, is, uh, that was already appropriated. We hope that the releases will not be affected, but otherwise, I can't complain much um, in terms of anything deteriorating. I do, of course, expect that we can always get more uh, the Oliver Twist that I am. So. Well, we certainly wish you all the best in that regard. We have to thank you so much for coming on this morning. Dr. Ifedayo Adetifa is the Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. Thank you once again for thank coming on. Thank you for on. having me. Sunrise Ali.